All right, it is currently day nine in the Whiskey Advent Calendar. And we're on to the Naked Grouse. Now, Famous Grouse is, I think, the number one selling whiskey blend in Scotland. And uh, it's got, you know, it's like Teachers, Ballantines, uh, Bells, all of these are really famous Scottish whiskey blends. Um, until now, it has just been a blended scotch. Now, uh, what does that mean? Let's talk really quickly. Um, the five types of scotch. Uh, so this is a refresher. And if you view it in a mnemonic device like this, then you get everything. So um, if mom and dad and the three kids, think of it as mom, dad, three kids. Mom, single malt, dad, single grain, right? So single malt just means one distillery, all barley. So single grain, one distillery, a grain blend mash bill, right? A mix of things. Now, typically, a grain will be done in a column still, in a malt, in a pot still, but that's not always true. Now, if you are a product of two dads, two malts, single malts, you are now a blended malt, blended multiple distillery, malt only barley. If you're a product of two moms, you are a, or sorry, two moms, two dads. If you're a product of two dads, two single grains, then you end up with blended grain scotch. There's only a handful of true blended grains that are compass box and ones like this, right? Uh, William Grant and Sons. And um, that just means multiple stories, only grain whiskey. If you are a product of a mom and a dad, you are a blended scotch. And what that means is we bought malt and grain whiskey from multiple distilleries and mix them together. Most budget blends in Scotland are, in, uh, are blended malts because it means we can just buy it whatever we need from wherever we want to create the flavor we're looking for. Um, whiskey is usually, a, in Scotland, is usually a blended scotch, but not all blended scotch is whiskey. Uh, Compass Box has proved this, uh, plenty of brands have proved you can make blended scotch that tastes amazing. Um, and I think a lot of the classic blends are examples of that. So, Naked Grouse is taking the steps from blended scotch to blended malt, which is what Monkey Shoulder is, and a lot of really famous blends are blended malts. That means they're only using malt whiskeys, no grain whiskey. That's the Naked Grouse new addition. I'm excited about this because Naked Grouse, or Famous Grouse as a company, uses McAllen, Highland Park, a whole bunch of really famous, wonderful distillers for their base whiskeys. So, I would, when I saw Naked Grouse, if you're, all you're thinking is grouse blended scotch, you're gonna be a little annoyed, but if you realize what's actually happening here, uh, you realize there's an opportunity for something really amazing happening here. Oh, already you're getting all the sherry notes and all the brine notes from a Highland Park. There's a little bit of sourness in there, which makes me wonder if Akintoshin is involved somehow. This is all first fill sherry casks whiskeys, so no, Akintoshin is probably not in there. Although they do a three wood that does have sherry, so they could be. The nose is just magnetic. This is not a boring, thin, bright grain whiskey. This is definitely a malt blend. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I wonder what the price point is on that. If you wanted to keep 30 bucks, hell yes. So you can get that at Master of Malt for 30 bucks. That's not a request to go buy it, that's just a statement of information. Because uh, if you were gonna keep a budget blend, man, man that's good. And it's all the sherry direction, it's none of the, I prefer the budget blends like Black Bottle and the Johnny Walker Double Blacks and the things that are a little more smoky. Um, I like Black Bull, which has some really rich, interesting notes. Uh, but this, wise choice. Wise choice, famous grouse. Now there's Suntory Beam, if I'm not mistaken, but owned by Edrington Group. But the Grouse brand goes all the way back to some of the earliest merchant bottlers. And, and that's why Scotland has a tradition that America doesn't have in independent blends and bottlings. 
is because um, for a long time in Scotland and the UK, you had merchant bottlers, which just were meant shopkeepers purchasing barrels from other distilleries and mixing them to create something. That's the origins of Johnny Walker, uh, even Haig, which back in the day was uh, amazing. It's, I don't know if I like it today. Um, all the famous blends, Ballantines, uh, Buchanan, um, on and on, right? These were all origins and merchants. And uh, I may have a soft spot for that, my namesake. So actually, and if you're watching this, you'll be one of the only people who knows this. Uh, Richard Whittington is my full name. Uh, Richard Daniel Whittington. I'm actually the fourth, I think. And um, I can't, I can never remember. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it goes back all, I mean, it would have, there were broken names in the line, but uh, it goes all the way back, if you're English, to the story of Dick Whittington and his cat, which is one of my namesakes way back in the day and uh, was for a long time the mayor of London. Um, but who got his name, Dick Whittington, um, who got his riches by working for a merchant. Um, in the UK, ended up marrying the merchant's daughter, and so I sort of, uh, maybe I have a generational soft spot for UK merchants creating interesting things. Um, although I don't have a cat. Currently. <laughs> it doesn't help that my dad's allergic to cats, so if I ever got a cat, he could never come visit. Hot damn! This is good! This is good! Well done! Well done! Man, okay, so... Who is in charge of this? It doesn't say who is in charge of making it. I don't know who the master blender is for, I could look with enough Google time, but um, all the quotes are from Elaine Miller, who's the global marketing manager for Naked Grouse, and, and yet another badass woman in whiskey. I'm just saying. There are a lot of cherry notes in here. I'm guessing coming from all the rich cherry cask finish. They say that there's a smoke on the tail end of this. I'm not getting that. But then again, I don't get a lot of smoke and peat in McAllen. I do in Highland Park. So maybe that's where it's coming from. I guess if you call that last final finish of a hint of black pepper, the very beginnings of smoke peeking its head out, then you might call that smoke. Let's go with that. Let's go with that story, <laughs> and we'll stick to it. All right, that was a good one. Until tomorrow, may your crazy stay this side illegal, and may you return before we have time to miss you. Cheers.